Um, I will begin to introduce our speakers for the evening, for our Friday evening program, and I will let you, uh, let them introduce themselves and tell you as much as they would like you to know. Um, first, let's welcome Chanel Williams, President, Associated Students of City College of San Francisco, Ocean Campus. Welcome, Chanel. I don't want to be too loud. I can be that loud, so. All right. That is good. But we're going to get some pictures up here for you guys to see some of the organizing work, um, see some images of it. But first and foremost, I am so honored to have the opportunity to stand here and be with all of you who are so committed to working people here in America and beyond. Um, we've seen so many attacks this year, attacks to our wages, our social security and health benefits, our food systems, our housing, our constitutional rights and of course our schools. I always say when I come across individuals who are critical of unions for whatever reason that they're critical, um, that unions are all that we have to stand in defense against unprecedented, unprecedented corporate greed. And you know, the speaker before me mentioned some of that. So unions are what we have to fight for the working class here. These individuals at the top that have accumulated the vast majority of the wealth in the world care nothing for our families and our future. And, um, Safe CCSF Coalition meeting. This was at um, one of our centers. These were all the community members that came out. Um, it was a very large meeting. We had about almost 500 people at that meeting. Um, so you can go to the next slide. So we have to fight back, and our unions are best positioned to lead in solidarity with community in this fight. This is a student organizing meeting. Um, these are some of our key organizers. Um, we have student organizing meetings um, bi monthly, in addition to the large coalition meeting that you saw on the previous slide. Um, I've served as an officer of the Associated Students Council at City College of San Francisco for about two years, and I'm currently finishing my term as president. And I was just elected by students to serve on the Board of Trustees as student trustee for my last year at CCSF. So it's a big accomplishment, so we can fight back against these budget cuts. And I hope to transfer um, to a university next fall. This was a conference in Long Beach. Um, there's students that are now talking of forming a statewide student union. And this student union would encompass community colleges, uh, CSUs, UCs, and the K through 12. Um, there's efforts um, by this grassroots group, and there's also efforts by the statewide student for community colleges to really bring everyone together, because we need a union. <laughs> so um, Associated Students support student clubs, resource centers, and we advocate for the needs of students. Um, I'm a full-time student at CCSF for the past three years and came back to school after working for a number of years in like retail sales, local government, political grassroots campaigns, and what I now call the nonprofit industrial complex. <laughs> Who's heard of that term? Yeah. Who knows about the nonprofit industrial complex, right? So I got sick of that, so I came back to school. So I've been a worker for the majority of my life, about 13 years since I was 15 years old, and even I worked off the books even starting as early as nine years old. I come from a working class family. My father was a constru construction worker and a cook, and my mother was a certified nursing assistant. Um, from the time I was 10 years old and on, my mother had to support my sister and I as a single mother. Uh, this is a rally at, um, we're at the Mission Center, which is one of our nine sites. We were gearing up for the, a big rally on um, um, March 14th that was at City Hall in San Francisco. I was speaking, and there's a bunch of students and other folks. We stopped at the Mission Campus before heading to City Hall, and we marched. Um, down the streets um, through San Francisco to City Hall. So um, we grew up in a rough area of San Francisco, surrounded by substance abuse and violence and subsidized housing. As a teen, I struggled and made contact with the foster care and juvenile justice system, and I was able to turn around and, and eventually graduate from high school. After leaving the system, I thought the next best step was to work to support myself and support my mother. And I tell you some of my history because unlike many public education students in the nation, I know that we share some of the same experiences, struggles, inequities, injustices in life. 
I came back to school to continue to have options for the future. And this is, um, we, um, our staff unions passed a Prop A, it's a parcel tax, a local parcel tax, um, to get $20 million of extra funding into our school. So you see the president, Elisa Messer, she's the president of AFT 2121. Me and her, yeah. And uh, we're there with Phil Ting, I believe. Um, also Paul Fong, Assembly Member Paul Fong and Phil Ting. Uh, Tom Amiano has been in support. We've gotten some Assembly Member support and city um, official support for the proposition. So that was a, a press conference in, in support of that. Um, so I came back to school to have options for the future. And while in school, I joined the fight to defend public education as a student representative and lead organizer with the Save CCSF Coalition. City College of San Francisco, a couple years ago, was the largest community college in the nation, serving 110,000 students and has existed for 75 years. Now we serve 85,000 students and are still the largest community college in California and bigger than most colleges in the nation, even here at Rutgers. Um, we serve students from all walks of life, students that want to earn a general education degree, um, English as a second language students, uh, students that want an affordable option to transfer to a university, or that just want to learn a new skill or retrain for a new career. So this was our um, flyer for the big march, um, March 14th at City Hall. And basically, um, the fight that we're in now is to, to get those property funds that we won with overwhelming support to be used for education. I'll talk about a little of that, but that's one of our flyers from the coalition. In July of last year, our college with the history of excellence and being a pioneer in education was hit with a show cause sanction from the Accrediting Commission for Junior and Community Colleges, ACCJC. Has anyone ever heard of ACCJC? Who they are? Okay, we got some people. All right, so City College of San Francisco had never had any prior sanction, such as warning or probation, and now we had to show cause why we should remain accredited, which was completely unfathomable to most of us. So this meant we had to address 14 recommendations that were made by the ACCJC or be forced to close the school down. This is us uh, students, uh, you see me there with the bullhorn, that's the administration building. Uh, we had a rally and a march that we led to a sit-in, a student sit-in in our administration building. And you see myself and other student organizers there on the administration steps that were leading up to the chancellor's office. We were trying to bring our demands uh, to the chancellor and she, you know, our interim chancellor, I should say that, this is the interim administration. They weren't there, and this was the last day for uh, this report for participatory governance to be turned in. So we would expect our chancellor to be there, but somehow, maybe she got wind of what we were doing, she wasn't there, and we sit in, We had a sit-in. We had an all-night sit-in that was very successful, and we had a meeting uh, with the chancellor, uh, the special trustee, all the head administrators the next morning. It was five students, myself included, Eric Blanc, you see him right there, and other students we sat and had a meeting with the chancellor in the morning, but we had an all-night sit-in, and it was successful. No one got arrested, um, and it was about 30 of us. So that's what you see us with the bullhorn. We're speaking to about a crowd of like 100 students inside the admin building. So when this news came out, immediately students, faculty, staff, and community came together in overwhelming support of saving our college, and the Save CCSF Coalition was formed not only to keep the college open and accredited, but to protect our school's history of an, being an affordable, accessible, and democratic institution, which is really key, because the main issues that the ACCJC pointed out were with our governance and our finances. Not that we weren't an excellent learning institution, but our governance and finances. So they didn't like the fact that faculty had a strong voice, has a strong voice in decision making at the college, and they wanted us to tighten our belt in spite of this being a disservice to disenfranchised students, disenfranchised communities. They said we can't be everything to everyone. We can't be everything to everyone, but that's what I thought community college really is about. It's about serving all those that need that access to, to take a higher path in, a, in their educational career, right? That's what community colleges were created for, to be everything to everyone, but now they're saying that we can't be that. So I don't know if folks have been paying much attention, but community colleges in California have been ex hit extremely hard with budget cuts. California is ranked number one in prison spending and number 50 in higher education spending. We are last in higher education spending now. We're not 48 anymore, we're number 50 now, uh, which is a shame, it is a, a, a horrible shame, it's a shame. And this you see here, this is the Prop, Prop A rally. You see all that overwhelming community support, all that love for our college. That's when we were working on getting that parcel tax 
past, which has now been hijacked by our administration for other financial purposes, but we'll get into that. So community colleges in California over the past year have lost half a million students. 500,000 students have been lost from our system. We've been cut 800, 800 million dollars in state funding. God. <laughs> CCSF alone has lost 53 million dollars in funding and 20,000 students. Where will these students go? How are we to protect the promise of the master plan for education, which states everyone who can benefit from education will have access? When our administration, our former administrator, Ch uh, Chancellor Don Griffin, saw that the state was limiting access for students that need our college the most, he made the decision to not make the drastic cuts and instead pulled from our reserve. And this is what triggered the ACCJC and the state to come after us. Because our Chancellor Don Griffin was a good person. He didn't want to lay off workers, institute cuts to wages and benefits, cuts to classes and services for the most needy students. That's a shame. That's, that's the essence of community college. You can't cut those services. This was at a, a conference with a bunch of health and community college students. Um, it's really great to see the diversity. We were um, taking workshops. It was a really great event. Um, it was down in LA. And um, these are community college leaders from across the state of California. So that was a cool picture. <laughs> So um, our administration and board of trustees could have made some improvements, um, but such as better enrollment management, but this was no reason to threaten our great institution with closure. It was unfortunate that Don Griffin was diagnosed with a brain tumor and had to leave CCSF before the school was hit with the news of show cause. So he got sick and actually exited out before we got the news in July. What we have now is an interim administration that has gone wild that are pushing the reform agenda. They have removed lifelong learning, cultural enrichment, and civic engagement from our mission statement. The state and the powers that want to privatize and ration public education don't want to see our college to continue serving the community, even though we are a community college. They would much rather funnel these students into for-profit schools like University of Phoenix, Hill, DeVry, and online colleges which are spreading all over the nation and taking advantage of students. The ACCJC has done nothing to stop the abuses of these private institutions while they attack our public colleges. The root of these attacks are deep and our coalition has learned that this is bigger than City College of San Francisco. Corporations are using our legislature, the Department of Education, the Democratic Party, nonprofit organizations, uh, and those we consider allies to push the neoliberal agenda of accumulating more wealth. They see the public education system as their next 680 billion cash cow that they want to undermine workers and put more students in debt. 680 billion, billion is actually the figure that they see in terms of profit, in terms of restructuring the public education system. So you can see how much of an interest, money interest that is, 680 billion dollars. When the news of show cause sanction came out, corporate media like the San Francisco Chronicle painted CCSF as a broken institution that deserved the, that deserved, uh, the sanction because of years of mismanagement, which wasn't true. Corporate media, of course, is part of this agenda, being pushed by powerful money interest. Private foundations and think tanks with connections to the student loan market, like Lumina Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, American Legislative Exchange Council, Campaign for College Opportunity, and others want our system to run like businesses and diploma mills. They want standardization to measure success and outcomes and institute policies that do not promote equity and access. Our interim, our interim administration supports the reform movement and does not support equity, but instead it supports initiatives that make students compete for education. Initiatives like the Student Success Act, Target 2020, Race to the Top. These are some of a few of them. I know you guys have heard of Race to the Top, which is being proposed by the Obama administration. At CCSF, our inter interim administration is currently laying off all of our deans to hire new ones. They even tried to completely remove our department chair structure, which was an unprecedented move for any college. Every Most colleges have a department chair structure. We were able to stop the move with the department chairs, but are now fighting the hiring process. We do not even have a permanent chancellor, but we're hiring all these administrators that don't even know who their boss is gonna be, which is really strange to me. But this move makes sense when you find out that our first interim administrator, uh, our first interim chancellor, uh, Pamela Fisher, 
has a staffing business, an education staffing business for, for getting, you know, hiring higher ed, ed administrators. And she's received a grant from Lumina Foundation. This woman, yeah. So she saw an opportunity that she couldn't resist. We are now in our second interim chancellor, Thelma Scott Skillman, who is in partnership with a special trustee appointed by the state to aggressively downsize our school. What our coalition has been able to do in San Francisco is change the narrative. We've been able to shift this narrative that CCSF is a broken institution and start to expose some of these conflicts of interest and, and what's really happening here, which is great. We have to expose these people. We have to expose them. We've been effective at challenging our interim administration's attempt to further dismantle the college we know and love. There are still many challenges ahead. Like I mentioned about the parcel tax, our faculty and staff union were successful in passing a parcel tax with 73% of homeowners in San Francisco saying yes to being taxed, an additional tax. And even, you know, we have some conservative folks in SF. Not everyone is progressive, liberal, radical, whatever you may think. There's a conservative folks in San Francisco, and they, 73%, voted yes to take on this tax because they love City College. This will bring additional 20 million to our school. But now our administration is holding that money hostage and saying that they need to dump it into a reserve um, and imposing cuts to wages, benefits, laying off 60 staff. These are like your every, our workers that are all over the college, financial aid, maintenance workers, 60 staff have been laid off and they're cutting student services and classes when we just won that parcel tax. This is a diversity rally, um, a, a rally that we had in support of the diversity departments, ethnic studies, women's studies, um, LGBTQ studies. We got students from UC, CSU, and community college here um, that came up to CCSF. They actually had actions on the same day. The UC regents had um, some stuff going on the same day, so we all supported each other's actions and then ended at this rally at um, CCSF. So I love this picture, it's really awesome. So, um, we are in the fight right now to have those funds used as the voters intended, which was for education, to stop the layoffs and to preserve our classes and services. These are student leaders from all of the Bay Area um, community colleges, region three. Um, community colleges are broken into um, 10 regions, and so this is all the region three, which is like the Bay Area um, student leaders from community college. Um, another challenge, which is a big one, is that the leadership of our staff union SEIU 10 to 1 is not in solidarity with our faculty union and is instead working with the administration in their plan to impose these cuts. And they've been really outspoken about us ruining the process, that we're hurting accreditation. They don't want us to speak out. And it's just really sad, actually, because we should be in solidarity around resisting these cuts. And that's not happening. Uh, we want to get to the rank and file because united we stand and divided we fall. Um, this is a huge problem. Uh, we also have privately funded organizations on campus hiring students of color okay, I'm up, <laughs> to, um, to organize the push of the reform agenda. So there are many layers of resistance to our movement to fight the austerity. We have to be clear of the fact that the Democratic Party and the Obama administration have not been a friend to education and labor. This, um, we have to be clear on that. We have to look hard at the issue of racism and equity because black and brown communities have not been served well by public education. Corporate media has been good at fueling the attack on unions and schools with the image of unions being well-paid, mostly white teachers who do not care about students, especially students of color. They've been really